Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Why are you so against Muslims or Islam? Right. So, no, he asked the question first. He, he asked the question first. So, ladies and gentlemen, he asked the question, why am I so against Muslims slash Islam? Let me be clear. I'm against Islam. I'm not against Muslims. As a Christian, I'm taught to love all people and that includes Muslims. And so, I love all Muslims. But that doesn't mean that I have to be a fool. That I have to believe that because there are some good Muslims, that that means Islam is good. A religion that allows and legitimizes slavery is not a good religion. A religion that allows and legitimizes abortion is not a good religion. A religion that allows and legitimizes divorce is not a good religion. A religion that allows and legitimizes lying is not a good religion. A religion that allows for the persecution of Christians is and the church is not a good religion. And Islam legitimizes all of those things and many more besides. I would ask you, sir, are you against slavery? Then you are against Islam. So if you ask me, why am I against Islam? My answer is that it legitimizes slavery. We must stand against Islam because it teaches evil fruit. Like we should stand against ethno-nationalists and racists because they legitimize evil fruit. What do I call slavery? This is what I call slavery. It's what's happening in the Muslim world right now, where Arabs go into South Sudan and raid Christian villages, kill the men, and then kidnap black women and black children and then sell them in Islamic markets for less than you can buy a McDonald's. That's what I call slavery. And they sell them today, right now. Forget the European slave trade. That's illegal. We abolished it. We white European Christians don't need to receive a lecture about slavery. It is the fact that the world is ignoring the Arab and Islamic slave trade, the only place where you can buy a black person right now as a slave is in the Islamic world. Let's talk about that. Let's oppose that. And then we can talk about reparations when we've stopped the slave trade that's going on right now. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Going once. Reparations is just as important. From why do you put Islam uh, slavery over reparations? Okay, so reparations is nowhere near as important as abolishing slavery. Which do you think is more important? Stopping and wait one second. Do you think it is more important in the first instance to stop a crime or to compensate the victim of the crime? In the first instance, in the order of priority, which is more important? Then you're throwing, your, 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 your doing, you're throwing yourself both all together. Islam, Christianity. I'm asking you a question, you're not answering it. I'm asking you a question, answer the question. What's more important? Stop it. Right, right this second, there are black Africans being sold as Arabs, right? Do you think that the world should perhaps stop that from happening? And is it possibly 
more important to stop that from happening right now or to pay reparations for a crime we stopped 300 years ago. Right now. You don't, you don't need things, bro. Why, why are you even embarrassed, bro? Because in Sharia law, so it's right now, right? Rules, right. So rules. let's do that. But the point is, if you are going, and this goes back to your very first question, if you're going to oppose the slave trade, then you're opposed to something intrinsically Islamic. Because Islam permits and teaches the continuation of slavery. It legitimizes the continuation of slavery. And so, if you are a good person, with any kind of moral fiber, any mind of, kind of moral constitution, any kind of moral character, you won't be ashamed, as I am not ashamed to oppose Islam for that reason. What would you like to say to that? I don't oppose Islam. So you don't oppose slavery? So you do oppose Islam? Different forms. Cheap labor, you know, not, not knowing your self worth, how much you're willing to accept, how much you're not willing to accept. Yeah. So, this is what we call cognitive dissonance. Okay. Cognitive dissonance is when you say two contradictory statements. You have said, statement A, I am against slavery. Contradiction to that is, I am not against Islam. It follows that if Islam permits slavery and you oppose slavery, you are against Islam. That's just logic, bro. Now you can either swallow the red pill or you can't. It's up to you whether you've got the Does plasticity the of mind. Say slavery is okay as well? Yes or no? No. The Bible doesn't say that. Right? right, so let me answer that question. Okay. This is a mistake that lots of people make when they engage a Christian. They talk as if it's whatever their opinion is versus the Bible, right? That isn't how Christians use the Bible. This book, I hold in my hand, I believe every word of it, right? But my religion has a prism by which I interpret this Bible. It's called the covenantal system. In the new covenant, Christ says, I have come to set the captives free. It's a messianic prophecy that he's quoting from Isaiah. And when Isaiah was talking about the captives, he was talking about the slaves. And Christ was, when he was talking about setting slaves free, he was talking about it in the ultimate sense, our slavery to sin and the devil. He's come to set us free. But that inspired Christians and has done for 2,000 years to oppose and abolish the slavery and slave trade multiple times in history. Multiple times we've abolished slavery. Lots of people don't know that. They only know about the most recent one in the time of William Wilberforce. But did you know that William the Conqueror abolished slavery in England in 1068? Are you aware that Roman Empire abolished slavery in the 5th century? What happened in the 5th century? Christians changed the laws of Rome to conform more to the teachings of Christ. Uh, Louis the, I think it was the, the 11th or 10th or maybe 9th, I'm not, I'm not sure which Louis, but it's around that one of those. He abolished the slave trade in France in the 13th century. He said, that anyone who comes into France by the act of putting their foot on French soil, they're automatically free under French law. So Christians have abolished slavery multiple times. But Islam has never abolished slavery once, except under coercion by the Western world. Do you know when Saudi Arabia abolished slavery? 1968. Or was it 1962? You could still be a legal slave in Saudi Arabia in the 1960s. You know that time when you were fighting against apartheid in America? Slavery was legal in Arabia and had been for 1400 years. Islam dominated in the Arabian Peninsula for 1400 years. 
If it was intrinsic to Islam to stop slavery, they could have done it at any time. But they never did. And they never have. People are still being bought and sold as slaves in the Muslim world today. So let's oppose that. And if you oppose that, you are opposing Islam. So I'll ask you again, do you oppose slavery? And therefore, do you oppose Islam? Islam, no. Islam, no. Are you a Muslim? No. Okay. So you're okay with Muslims buying and trading slaves? No, I'm not. So you would oppose those Muslims who buy and trade slaves? They go by a certain book which they're, 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 they're upholding to. Thank you. So you're right. There you go. You got it. But the Christian faith, don't really follow the Christian Bible. No offence, but you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. You really don't know what you're talking about. Because what you're, what you're doing is you're absorbing ignorant people's criticism of Christianity and you're... Re well, and your are Then you don't know enough Christians, bro. You just don't know enough Christians. And uh, I would also suggest it probably means that you don't know the Bible well enough either. Because lots of Christians follow religious teachings. Today, the ones that are going into the Muslim world to stop Muslims owning slaves are Christians. It's Christian missionaries who are going in Sudan and buying slaves to set them free. That's what Christians are doing while Muslims are kidnapping people and selling them as slaves. And here's the problem that I have with your position. I think you lack moral courage. I think you lack moral courage, I genuinely do. Because on one hand, you say that you oppose slavery. You say that you oppose slavery. But you won't oppose a book which you acknowledge legitimizes slave trade. And that's cowardly. And we as Christians believe that cowards go to hell. Christians are going to prison for what they believe in. We're being arrested for what we believe in. We're being killed for what we believe in. That's what's happening in the UK. But you don't hear about it because the left-wing media never tells you. The reality is Christians are following our faith. Give me an example where we're not following our faith. Okay, right? The reality is there are, of course, bad Christians, like there are bad Muslims, right? There are Muslims that don't want to follow their religion. So they're against marrying children because they're not following what their religion teaches. Are you opposed to marrying little children? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Okay, so if a book allows you to marry little children, should you oppose it? Depends once again. How, Depends on what? How, book, uh, how old the book is. Yeah. And they follow it by the book. Obviously so you're saying, then, right. So let's say I have a religious book yeah. that's uh, 1,400 years old. And it says white people enslave and kill black people. And I did that. Would you oppose me? Yeah. Right. But what happens if I said, no, my book says it's okay? Is that a defense? <laughs> Is it a defense? <laughs> it's not a defense. So in other words, right, because you're black, if I had a book that said that it was okay to enslave you and to kill you, you would say, because my book said it, it's not a defense. But yet you're not willing to say that about Islam. All I've done is replace all I've done is replace a particular practice and a particular book, but the logic has remained the same. And this is cognitive it's dissonance. Like Torah, though, isn't it? What? Torah. If you're a Jew, you're above every other person. Right, so let's so, uh, yeah. What's the difference there, then? Right, so let's address that. Against the Torah. Are you against the Torah? Right, so let's address that. Okay. Because this is this is where a lot of people don't understand how Christians read the Bible. We have a covenantal system. And in that covenantal system with the coming of the Messiah, the boundary wall, the separation between Jews and the Goyim, the nations, the Gentiles, is tore down. That's what it says in Galatians, right? Or is it Ephesians? One of those two letters. The separate, the wall of division, the separating wall is torn down. And now there's no division between Jew and Gentile. We're all one in Christ. So 
Am I opposed to a rabbinic Jew that wants to create a separation between Jew and Goyim, Jew and Gentile? Yes, I am opposed to the rabbis. I oppose their teaching. Why? Because I believe in the new covenantal uh, establishment. And we Christians read the Bible through the new covenant. So it, it doesn't actually work to point out things in the Old Testament that we Christians believe has been fulfilled. Do you get what I'm saying? Right? So it's not, you can't, you can't point to the Torah to try and legitimize the Quran. Because Muslims follow the Quran, we believe that the Torah has been fulfilled in Jesus. And that means that a new covenant has been established that is different from the covenant that was given on, to Moses at Mount Sinai and that it is not like that covenant. And that's quoting from Jeremiah, the prophet. Do you see my point? Yeah? But I want to challenge you again because I still think that you're not... Well, I, I do think you're a moral coward. I do. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, here, to, not here to take prisoners, bro. Right? You've got to be challenged because only through challenge do you grow. If you go to the gym and your gym instructor says, just lift weights that are easy, do you put on muscle? No. Right. So the only way we grow in truth and we grow in moral character is when our failings are challenged. So I'm not challenging you out of any kind of hatred or, no, or right. prejudice. Yeah, yeah. I'm challenging you because I see an inconsistency in your thinking. I used exactly the same logic it's all right. Anyone, anyone who's caught him on camera, just blur his face, please. Okay. So now they'll blur your face, right? Okay. Blur his face, JC. Blur his face, Rev 22. So I exposed an inconsistency in your thinking, and it's the same kind of inconsistency that our liberal society has. They'll say liberals will say things like, "I'm opposed to slavery," but they won't say, "I'm opposed to Islam." that legitimizes and practices slavery. That's inconsistent. I, I show, I've demonstrated the, uh, the cognitive dissonance in your thinking because I just swapped out the words Islam for my book, the Quran for my old book, which I said was 1400 years old. And I swapped out slavery for sp a specific kind of slavery, the slavery of black people by white people. So white people is replaced by Muslims and black people is replaced by the Kuffar. But when I said white people and black people in my 1400 year book, you said you'd oppose it and that me saying it's in my book is not a justification. But then when I reinsert Muslims and Kuffar and Quran, suddenly you say, no, 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 I, I don't oppose that. That is an example of cognitive dissonance. And you've learned that from a liberal culture. Any other questions? Okay. So, as Christians, we should oppose Islam. And all of you liberals, you're suffering from cognitive dissonance. If I say I have a 14 year, 100 year old book, right? Let's call it the Quran with a K. Right? And in my 1400 year old book called the Quran, it says white people can enslave black people. You will all rightly oppose me. But if I say to you that my book says it's okay, you will say that is not an excuse. But all I did is replace white people with Muslim, black people with Kufar, and the Quran with a K for the Quran with a QU, but I said exactly the same that Muslims say. If you would oppose my Quran racist religion and slavery, then you should oppose Islamic slavery. That is cognitive dissonance if you are unwilling to do that, ladies and gentlemen, and our liberal culture suffers from liberal dis cognitive dissonance. Any other questions? Go on. From the Christian view, for example, you cannot separate the Christianity and the Western civilization. This is clear. You study the history church, 
So why now the left wing, uh, so called uh, the government, especially in America, the Europe, they persecute some Christians, they abandon the church, they care about some minorities. Okay, so why, why are Western liberal societies persecuting Christians, ladies and gentlemen? There was a separation between the church and the state and between Christianity and liberal politics in the 1700s. Most Europeans don't know that. We don't know that Western civilization rejected the Enlightenment, rejected Christianity during the Enlightenment. It has taken about 280 years for that conscious rejection to play itself out in our politics and in our culture. It finalized and crystallized in the 1960s with the sexual revolution. And Christians have been persecuted increasingly from that time. But why? Why are Christians being arrested for thinking outside of abortion clinics? Why are Christians being arrested and their businesses being closed down because they won't allow homosexuals to rent a room together because we don't believe in sex outside of marriage and we don't believe gay sex leads to marriage. Why did Trudeau excuse the burning of 38 Christian churches in Canada? Why have Christians been arrested and lost their jobs because they have opposed late-term abortion or gender ideology. It is because we Christians oppose the Enlightenment ideology. But I want to challenge you Christians that we don't oppose liberalism enough as Christians. Too much of our Christianity is still influenced by liberalism. Christianity does not teach individualism. Christianity does not teach nationalism. Christianity does not teach the idea of tolerance or equality as, as value systems by which we build our society around. Christianity does not teach utilitarianism. And yet so much of our thinking political, our thinking cultural, and our thinking moral is still influenced by liberalism. We need to reevaluate where we have agreed with the liberalism of the Enlightenment and start to rework Christianity in opposition to the liberal state and the liberal culture and the liberal politicians. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Any questions going once? So another thing, Christians, they should be less influenced by the Enlightenment thinking. All this it does on the religious right in America seems to be like, it seems very thing like free market, less in fair economy. It seems to be a trend among the white men. So let's be clear, ladies and gentlemen, Christianity is not by default in favor of free markets. Laissez-faire capitalism, the kind of capitalism advocated by Margaret Thatcher and by Ronald Reagan in the New Right political movement, is not Christian. What happened when the New Right legitimized laissez-faire economics is that they separated economy from morality and they said that laissez-faire economics is just a function of human interaction but the scriptures teach that where sin increases lawlessness will abound the very idea of a free market is the idea of a market unrestricted by law. We Christians should be in favor of a Christian economy, of a Christian market, a market 
that is governed by law so that we use law to curtail the effects of sin. The effects of sin like abortion. The effects of sin like gambling houses, casinos, strip clubs, all-you-can-eat restaurants. Because gluttony is a sin, ladies and gentlemen. We should use law to restrict the free market so that the choices that people have are steered towards not-for-profit organisations whose existence as a business is towards charitable concerns. We should use the law to favour charitable businesses over businesses for profit. Christians are not in favour when you take our understanding of morality in favour of free market economies. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen, about the Christian faith? Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Going once, going twice, going three times. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, you'll have to get JC for that. If there are no more questions, I'm going to talk about another topic. Yes, sir. Thank you for calling me, sir. No, sir. Thank you. You know the Muslims, do you know why they're not changing their rules, some of those rules you talk here about the baby's marriage or slavery, things like that? Right, so the, so the question is, ladies and gentlemen, why, has, why doesn't Islam abolish slavery? Why doesn't it abolish the idea of apostasy laws? It's because Islam doesn't permit reformation of the Sunnah. The idea of Islam is that you have to follow the example of Muhammad. So when Muhammad bought and sold black slaves, you can buy and sell black slaves. When, Mar when Muhammad married Aisha, who was six, and had sex with her when she was nine, you can marry six-year-olds and have sex with nine-year-olds. The problem for Islam is Muhammad. But we Christians have a different ethical system. Our paradigm of moral system is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, and in our religion, we don't have to follow Jesus in the same way that Muslims have to follow Muhammad. We have to embody his virtues and his ethics. We're not bound by his actions. And so, when the apostles teach, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, that allows us to take the teachings of Jesus and new knowledge about, for instance, how to have an economy that allows us to free ourselves from the practice of slavery because Jesus himself said, I have come to set the slaves free or to abolish child marriage because we learn about childhood development and we know that there's no such thing as a nine-year-old woman. We know such thing, we know that there's no such thing as a five-year-old woman. And that is the difference between Islam and Christianity.